you wouldn't say that was a great Chiefs team. Mm. That one, if you're going to do one of those, oh, I'm like the Super Bowl winners, the 60 best ones, that they would be about like. 40th or something, yeah. I think. <laughs> sure. Well, I mean, how, other than well, Ma- other than Mahomes, maybe it was something you know. We we talked about a fair bit on the show that three quarters of the way into the season, it, it everyone, oh, the, the Chiefs are done. There's no way, there is no way this team is going, you know. And we said at the time, you can't once you've got a seat at the table, once you're in the knockout mechanic playoffs, and you've got a player like Mahomes and a coordinator like Spags and, and the components they had, particularly to your point, because it was quite an even field. You know, it wasn't it, it wasn't demonstrably. 49ers, I guess, were probably the most balanced and and, and deep team in terms of starters. Yet there, there were obviously questions about them. And, and it feels like it was that window of opportunity. But at the same for the Lions, but at the same time. I think that's going to open up again for you. We'll get into that. We're going to talk about the North. So we'll talk about the Lions offseason so far. We'll look at the the contenders to that uh, division, the Packers, most notably the Bears are fascinating, as you say, and the Vikings in decline, you would think. But they're certainly going to be looking for a quarterback in the draft. So we'll get into draft stuff, not just for the Lions, but for what the North are doing as well. And for everyone. For everyone, we're going to we're going to the draft for everyone. It's not uh, people listening to this podcast think, oh, it's going to bang on about the lines again. Shut, shut, stupid bald mouth. I feel <laughs> sick. I'm already turning off. I'm already turning off. Is that all he knows about the stupid Detroit Lions? We're well, that may a... be true, but I'm going to say some other nonsense as well. Good. Well, I'm glad to hear that because there's a lot of nonsense uh, we want to draw out of you, not least from the Passion Cavity mailbag. Because every time you're on the show, Marek. It is a bumper mailbag. We get lots of questions in. And I've noticed that whenever you're on the show, yeah, there are a fair amount of football questions relating to... And, and, viewer, numbers are da- and viewer numbers are down. Listen, numbers are down. Beautiful. Whenever you're on the show, listen, numbers are about uh, <laughs> decline. Around this point, you see like this steep drop off in the stats. <laughs> it starts off and you start the first two minutes. Listeners are already down to 7%. So if you're still listening, thank you. I was in a roundtable meeting with um, with a few of the few of the team, and the one of our guys that works on sponsorships said, "Yeah, we I don't quite understand. Uh, every episode there's a ninety four percent retention rate, <laughs> and then there's this every now and then there's this one which just after about three or four percent of the show yeah. just disappears. Gone. That's the Merrick Larwood episode, and they said, "Can we not sponsor that one?" <laughs> yeah, we're, uh, so this one is sponsored one. this one is sponsored by dick stink pills if you're <laughs> <laughs> mate i've told you they actually could sponsor the shirt so don't don't take them don't take if them you've down. got some unpleasant smells why not try these pills i know i know i've been taking them for the last five years and they've taken three percent off the smell this is the kind of YouTube content we need to drive to drive the YouTube channel. Can you put that in, Dick Stink Pills? I think we could sneak. We could probably sneak that. Hey, Ollie hasn't turned up to record again, so I mean, what? who knows he's what's going to make the cut? He must have a problem. He's always he always skies off whenever I'm on. What's his problem? Well, hey, to be fair, mate, he he seems to skive off whenever anyone's on right now. I think. I mean, at the moment, he's probably at Aintree for the Grand National. We're recording this Saturday morning. He just seems to want to hang around with Alan Brazil and Ali McCoist, getting drunk at horse racing. Oh, did you know that when I was young, this is off topic on the Grand National. Yeah. Between the ages of about six and ten, I had an, an uncanny ability to pick horse horses that won races. And my granddad would bet on horses as his hobby. Yeah. And he used to start I picked like three Grand National winners in a row. I think it was like Corbier, come on, West Tip and oh, uh, Corbier, in the old school reference. Yeah. 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 84. And my granddad started getting me to pick out horses. And I and he would give me like a quid or so when they won. I would just win a lot, only for a period of like two or three years when I had a strange ability to pick winners. I love that he he probably made a hundred quid in just come, yeah he made down. millions 1%. and I made yeah <laughs> millions yeah have you seen the the film Two for the Money with um, Al Pacino and Matthew McConaughey? No. Hey Marit, the Spotify playlist, the show Spotify playlist. Have you heard about that? I listen to it all the time. Really? When, I'm, when I'm not recording to this show, yeah. I'm listening to the show Spotify playlist. What's your favourite song on the playlist? Um, it has got to be uh, uh, what? What is it? Uh, yes, uh, that Bucks fear is making your mind up. <laughs> that well, that isn't. I don't think it's on the playlist, but maybe it. Maybe that's it a draft. That's a draft 
playlist. Ah, oh, the making of minor draft playlist. We, we, can, we can put it on there. We'll put the box for his version. On. That have is you got a draft a, playlist, have you? Just a show playlist, but we could put a draft. You should do a draft we? playlist. What would be on there? Well, making your mind up. Mm-hmm. What songs are about um, choosing? Mm-hmm. Because of the war room. War. The yeah, ma- yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, I don't. I think I need more time. Why don't the viewers <laughs> yeah, yeah. send in their What's suggestions? What's on the draft playlist? Yeah. But buy Twitter for the draft playlist. What Could a have, great thing to do. Today was a good day by Ice Cube if the draft goes well. <laughs> Jerry oh, Jones. Good, yeah. Jerry Jones could pop that on as the Cowboys feel happy with themselves. Would you make so, them all sing it? All the war rooms sing it as a phone, sing along with so, it. This is what like radio DJs, don't they, do in the morning. Okay, <laughs> hi guys, we're gonna to dangerous themes, constipation. <laughs> Sending your best constipation songs and we'll be playing a few of them later on. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll make a draft playlist and a constipation playlist for you, Matt. Would be that would be good. That would be, that'd be very helpful. <laughs> no problem at all. The main um the main show playlist though has been built. Now, we started off with 50 songs, and it's got some goodies on there. Obviously, there's some Springsteen, some Gaslight Anthem. Uh, I even dropped a bit of Usher on there after the Super Bowl because I loved loved oh. Usher. Loved Usher in Vegas. Uh, and then we've put it out, Seven the Crew on social, put it out uh, to you guys. We'll put a link to the playlist in the show notes so you can s- subscribe to it on Spotify. But you can also build. We're going to build this, the list together, basically. So if you want to put a name, uh, a song forward, for consideration on the playlist, just do it on social at the NC show. And if it makes the cut, we'll add it and we'll let you know. And, and already, I think we've added like 25 songs from listeners. What do they, what do they win? They don't win anything. They just get their song on the playlist and it's just building a place together. It's not everything has to have a prize in life. Yeah, opinion. sure. Quite, quite give them a prize. We'll give them a pound like your grand your granddad did. We'll give a pound, a pound per song if it makes the cut. That's quite good, actually. Oh, that, we, we could do some kind of mechanic with Shelter, which Shelter's our show charity of choice, right? So we could make some kind of donation. Every time a song makes the cut, we could... No. What do you mean, no? <laughs> what do you mean, no? <laughs> I expect you to subscribe to the playlist. And Mar- uh, by the end of this show, I think it's a bit of a reach to, to come up with your draft and constipation playlist by the end of this show. But perhaps oh, you can give us a song you want to go on the main show playlist by the end of the, the, this show. Okay, yeah? great, great, great. All right, let's get down to the draft then. So the first thing I thought of knowing you were coming on today was this time last uh, was Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're right, sorry. The second thing I thought of, <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> when I knew you were coming on was this time last year. We You definitely came on the show at some point this time last year, post the 2023 20, draft. And how everyone was piling in on the Lions. Remember? And, oh, it was a terrible draft. And why are they Jimmy yes, Gibbs? They're yes. taking crazy high. Well, Gibbs, of course, goes... 12th. Yeah, goes 12th. Goes Pro Bowl. Jack Campbell was second amongst all rookies and tackles. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was a, a disappointment. If anything, a disappointment. I'd was say. Was he? I think he probably needs longer. We'll see this year. So he was sort of not mentioned. But then you've got... Hmm. Uh, Sam Laporta and Brian Branch, who were both absolute second round. I mean, brilliant picks. Yeah. Would you be one of those? This is an odd phenomenon I've I've noticed that because I live near the sea, there's a strange thing where you get old men Mm. wearing trunks and they just stand. Right, you know, uh, everywhere you go, I know what you mean. <laughs> you know, you, looking, everywhere, gazing out into the they're world. They're just, they're just standing, just in the sea. Yeah, and they're really brown, like they've gone there in February yeah. from the yeah. very first thing. Leather they're so brown. They've got white trunks, and they just stand there all day. Every beach you go to, I see one of it. Like you knew immediately what I was talking about. Every- the old man. Overturned old man standing uh, just in the sea. I've been in France, south of France this week, and there was we went to we went to we stayed in Nice, but we went to Monte Carlo, went to Monaco, and um, wandering around there onto the beach, sure as chips, there is permatan, leather tan. Yeah. Just the commitment. You know he's been on the beach since 7:50 in the morning. You know he's gonna be there until the last ounce of sunlight, and he's there in tight. Tight speedos, yeah, it's always working, speedos, yeah, working the tan often, often, light doesn't bother with 
hiring a sun lounge or bring just often lying straight on the or in in the case of uh, monaco because they have sandy beaches they're kind of sl slightly kind of softy gravelly just on there no i don't need sometimes on rocks i don't need to i'm just here every day seven days a week yeah that's i think we're getting somewhere now i would i think have a real commitment to that kind of leather tan and at night hit hit the clubs of santa barbara <laughs> that sounds pretty good actually you're in come come stay with me mate let's do it we'll yeah do it. We'll do borrow, borrow some of those swimming trunks <laughs> you can definitely borrow a pair or two of those well me and oj simpson used to watch some masters <laughs> together <laughs> and kato K hey we didn't talk about kato kaylin that whole part of it was weird his who was basically his house guest that's how he's always referred to in the press wasn't it oh really kaylin, his house his house guest that's what I'd have that. in San. I'd have in Santa Monica. I've moved your house guest with a speed. Why? What's Marit Lowden <laughs> going around in your swimming trunks? He oh, he's my house guest. Didn't just, you uh, put those in the wash yesterday? <laughs> just he just he's just a guest. So yeah, yeah he, you could be. He's my house guest. Yeah. <laughs> he's just, would I have, like, maybe I'll have adopted a bit of the Ben Husk by the time I'm in. By the way, we've been. I've gone from San Diego to Santa Barbara, to Santa Monica. Now they're, they're all different places. Oh, they? great. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Um, I might, yeah. So I have crazy permatan. Would, I would, I, my hair, I, I wouldn't dye it. So I'd go white hair, crazy permatan. Oh, you look and, lovely. You'd have white eyebrows nice. as well. Then all just completely white. Oh, be, 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 would I paint? Would I sculpt? I might sculpt. I And I'd have a Ben Husk, like that Husk Ben had in his voice note. Just as, oh like, yeah. I just, it's, and a slight transatlantic. Husk. Oh, is he doing that now? Has he gone American? I think he might have gone a little bit. I drive. I drive a bit transatlantic. Yeah, I think. I mean, I do that anyway a little bit, right? So <laughs> we just get worse as I get get uh, older. All right, where were we? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Paul Murphy's question. So the Masters, uh, the only major which stays at the same venue annually, which adds to its uniqueness as Paul. Should the Super Bowl uh, follow suit? Is what he's asking. So should basically the Super Bowl stay? in the same venue every year. I'm a firm no on that. Yeah, absolutely yeah. not. Absolutely not. I think it's good for, t I mean, I remember it's, if it's good for smaller teams, uh, the place like when, when Detroit had a Super Bowl many years ago and uh, other other teams, um, uh, places aren't really on the map. When they get it, it's a great chance for them to, you know, brings a lot of money in to yeah. other places, the poor areas. It would just be... A mass, it would end up being somewhere like Las Vegas, wouldn't it, every year? Yeah. That's what would happen. Yeah, I and just be... live, with, live with that. Vegas yeah. every year. Santa Monica every year. The um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I love the the variation from a could be selfish point of view, going you know to different different place every year, and um, yeah, I think it's the energy that a new that a or a fresh venue creates that's important yeah. for the Super Bowl. The whole the whole the whole energy. All in the build up to it. So, Paul, good idea, but no dice with that one. Good idea, right. but also rubbish idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too. All right. Last but not least, because you mentioned um, you mentioned Cool Dudes Walking. So, uh, Matt, this is maybe the the pick of the bunch, and it's a high bar as well because it's been a great mailbag uh, this week. I uh, hope this isn't too late, says Matt via the NC show on Twitter. But after seeing the hardest geezer run Africa, yeah, like that, would Marek walk it? This is his question. Marek walk Africa after the hardest geezer ran Africa. Yeah, I saw that bloke. It was incredible what he did. Mm. I've I've done some long distance walking. Some of you might know, probably none of you. I've got a, a YouTube channel. I've got a couple of my own one, and I do a walking channel where I go and walk places. And I've done the South Downs Way, which was 100 miles in seven days. And it's just the cumulative effect of walking it's okay doing a walk over 10 miles or 15 miles one day, then doing it the second day and the third day and the fourth day. What's as depressing as you get older is just the recovery time, mm. just recovery time and just small injuries that you never consider. It's like, oh, right, my hip feels bad now. Yeah. In about 20 years, that's probably going to go or just a slightly knackered knee or things like that. It's just... This is what many of your listeners have got to look forward to. <laughs> She's really um, hyping, hyping it all up there. Yeah. Uh, do you? What do you think when you when you're walking? What do you? What do you do? Do you listen to shows? Do you think? Do you always do it in company or do it solo? Like how do you? Mostly by it? myself. Yeah. I I never listen to anything because I think that's defeats the whole point of it. 
it's just quite nice being outside. I daydream. So mm. I make walking videos and I take a, a, a got like a, just a GoPro and a mic and I take photos and I just talk. To, that gives me something to do. You don't film, film yeah. the whole time, do you? The whole walk? I just film little clips of it. So okay. if I, so I'd put, well, I'd probably put about 150 clips per video and I edit those down to like a 10 minute video and I put music on it to cover up me going, <laughs> <laughs> going up hills. Yeah, yeah. And just uh, talk you, you nonsense. Continuously or thereabouts, because I it just much not continuously, but no. it takes ages to edit. Yeah. It takes a long time to edit. Um because most war walking videos on YouTube are really boring. Mine are marginally less boring. Mm. So if you want to watch that's a walking hard. video, that's a great sell. yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll put a link into the into the show notes there for the YouTube channel. Um and it's a great question as well, Matt. I appreciate that. I would I would I'd watch that. I would watch well the 10 minute version anyway of you walking Africa. In 10 minutes. In 10 minutes. That'd yeah. be good, yeah. <laughs> yeah.